This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to the playlist in the description below, or you can click on this. In this video, I'm going to use some of the equations and relationships that we've derived in previous videos, and I'm going to derive a relationship between the energy and some other constants and variables. So we're actually deriving an expression for the nth energy of an electron in the Bohr model. Like other quantities, like the radius and angular momentum, energy comes in discrete values. So you can't have any possible energy. You can only have a discrete set of allowed energies if you're an electron orbiting and uh, orbiting the nucleus in the Bohr model. So let's go ahead and have a look at some of the expressions that we derived in the previous video. We actually derived this expression in the previous video. This links together the radius and the nth integer. So this, this value is 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what n stands for. So the nth radius is the first radius times this factor of n squared. So it's a quadratic relationship, proportional to the square of n. It's not linear, so that means the second uh, radius is actually going to be four times bigger than the first radius. And the third is going to be nine times bigger. That's uh, the property uh, of, of this n squared factor. Another thing that we derived was this relationship over here. mv squared is kze squared over r. So r is the radius, k is Coulomb's constant, z, that's the, the atomic number, how many protons are in the nucleus, and e is the charge on an electron. It's also the same as the charge on a proton. It's just the sign difference. And because we're squaring it, it doesn't matter. So now, let's have a look at the energy. First of all, I'm going to write an expression for the total energy of the electron. So the total energy is going to be I'll write this E sub t. So energy, and this is the total energy. Now, the electron can have kinetic energy, and it can have potential energy. The kinetic energy will write as E sub k. And the potential energy, uh, I'm going to write as u because this is a convention, u for the potential energy. In some of the later videos, you'll actually see v represent the potential energy. But for now, I'm going to write u as the potential energy, because we're still in a kind of semi-classical, semi-quantum uh, Bohr mess. Right? This is still a bit of a mess. We're not fully into quantum mechanics yet. We're still in the Bohr model. So the total energy is just the sum of the kinetic and the potential. How can we write the kinetic energy? Well, the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, right? And what do we see on this side? We see an mv squared. You can see that that's the reason I wrote this up, because we're going to have to substitute it in over here. Uh, and what is the potential energy? Well, what is the electron uh, doing? It's sitting inside a Coulomb potential, right? This is a simple electrostatics problem. So a Coulomb potential is actually very similar to uh, the Coulomb's force law, right? Except it doesn't have an r squared, it has an r. And it also has a minus sign. So I'm going to put a minus sign over here. That's to signify that we're in the potential, and the potential is negative. So we've got a minus sign, and we're going to have a kze squared over r. Now, we don't have an r squared because that's Coulomb's law for the force. So r squared, the inverse square law, only works for the force. The potential energy only has a factor of r, so not r squared. That's an important distinction. It actually uh, comes back to the uh, work energy theorem. And the work energy theorem tells us why this is an r and not an r squared. So now we have an expression for the potential energy. So this is actually plus potential. But because the potential is negative, we have a minus sign over here. And this over here is the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Have a look at this expression over here. If we just divide both sides of this expression by 2, we have half mv squared is equal to all of this divided by 2. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. What we end up with is kz e squared over 2r. Right, so I've just divided this by 2, put a 2 in the denominator, and I'm going to subtract away k z e squared over r. Have a look at this. We have half and we have a whole. So a half minus a whole 
is minus a half. Or I'll say that again. So we've got a half minus a whole is minus a half. So that uh, we can actually see is just going to be negative k z e squared over 2r, right? Because if you think of this as a whole and we're subtracting it away from a half, we're just going to have minus a half. So this over here is an expression for the total energy. But have a look at this. We can actually substitute into this radius a dependence on n because we want the energy in terms of n. We want the nth energy level. So what we can do is in here we can substitute r1 times n squared. And what we can actually see is, is that the nth energy level, so this is an e, that's a little messy e, I'll write a, a slightly better e, uh, e n, which is the nth energy level, that is equal to minus kze squared on the top, so it's still that, minus k z e squared on top, and we're going to have 2 times r1 times n squared. Now, if we're dealing with hydrogen, z is going to be equal to 1. And inside this expression for r1, there's actually a z. And if you set z equal to 1, you get the Bohr radius. And this was actually going to turn into the Bohr radius if you're dealing with hydrogen. But I'm going to keep this general so it works for other elements as well. So this expression over here, what do we see? We see a constant, right? This is a constant, R1. All of these guys in the top are constants, so we can group them in together, and we can write this as E1 over N squared. So this is N squared on the bottom. And what is E1? E1 is a negative value. E1 is all of these constants together. I'll write it explicitly uh, in, this, in this bottom area here. So E1 is equal to minus k z e squared over 2 r sub 1. So this over here, this is the lowest energy that the electron can have. It can get knocked up to higher energies, but it can't go lower than this. This is the lowest energy. And if we want to go to uh, higher energies, all we have to do is put in a value of n that isn't 1. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So how is this the case? If we put an n over here, then we're going to get a, uh, if we put in a larger value than 1, we're going to get a bigger value downstairs, and that's going to make this smaller. But keep in mind, this is negative. And if you make a negative number smaller in magnitude, what you end up getting, uh, you end up actually getting closer to 0. So you're going to keep moving up towards 0 as this guy gets bigger. And we'll talk more about this in later videos. But the, important, the most important relationship that you need to get from this video is that the energy of an electron in the Bohr model is equal to the fundamental energy, or the, the lowest possible energy, divided by n squared. So it's an inverse square relationship between the nth energy level and the integer n. And n can take on any value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? It's just a counting number. So this is the most important fact that we've gathered from this video. And we're going to use this fact in later videos, and we're also going to uh, possibly use this in later videos too.